This broadcast of In Focus is being made possible through the support of Reed Health. Reed Health, right beside you. And by Cronin Toyota and Cronin Nissan, with over 70 cars inside their massive showroom so you can shop in comfort. Cronin Toyota and Cronin Nissan, 5601 National Road East. Hi, I'm Eric Marsh. Thanks for joining me for this week's In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. Later in the show, we'll recap the grand opening of the Blue Buffalo facility, and we'll talk with some of the mayors that were visiting for the Indiana Conference of Mayors. But we start this week's show with a conversation with a local entrepreneur who likes things that go boom, and how he has turned that passion, plus an interest in giving back to the community, into a growing and thriving business. Here's our conversation with Jeremy Scaretti. I will tell you, I had heard the name a little bit, um, and it was in conjunction with Fountain City. I kept hearing about this fireworks display over in Fountain City. Right. And over the last couple of years, this has continued. There's this great fireworks display <laughs> over in Fountain City. Last year, I had a chance to actually go over and see the display. And what do you think? What do you, yeah, all right. Yes. That's what we like to see. Yes. That's what we like to see. Very nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We put a lot of effort in that. For those who don't know you, give us a little bit of your background. Well, I, I used to sell beer for 14 years, so a lot of people might know me locally in the community. Um, I used to be the Budweiser guy. Okay. So, yeah, um, but um, about 10 years ago we started, um, I was running a ball league with Bill Day, and, uh, and that was in Fountain City, and it was to help the ball league raise money, and we decided that, hey, let's have a fireworks show. I had a special license that I had received because I love fireworks just like I think everybody does, I hope. And uh, childhood dream was, hey, let's shoot fireworks. Well, I wanted to buy the big stuff. <laughs> so I started shooting the big stuff for my own personal use. And I told Bill, I said, hey, let's, let's shoot a fireworks show for the ball league. And hopefully we can raise some money with our concession stand. And it was a non-for-profit. We're still, they're still non-for-profit now. Good. And um, we just, 10 years ago, we, we started that out, didn't know how well it would do. And now it's 10th anniversary this year. So... Fountain City has definitely done extremely well, and I'm so proud of the community. I'm proud of all our sponsors that help out. Um, we were able to put up some new fencing out there. Um, we've, we've bought fencing for the ball diamonds. Uh, we're working on the fields. We're working on you know the, the bleachers and the, uh, the dugouts, and there's so many things that go in with a ball field, but it's been a fun ride. It actually has. We did a show a couple of weeks ago and talked to a couple of, of local entrepreneurs. So you mentioned that you had a special license. Talk about the licensing and whatever it is that you need to even get into this. Because, yeah, so yeah, everybody picks up some yeah. sparklers or something. And actually, um, w I, the reason I got involved was um, I was at a gun show. And it was the Indy 1500 or the 500, and they do it at the state fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And the guy that, um, instead of looking at guns, he has these firework guns set up, and they're huge. And um, I said, wow. I said, I want to do that. And he goes, well, lucky you're here. He said, that's why I'm here. I want to find people like you that like fireworks. You come in, I'll help you get your license, and then you'll buy product from me. So that was the way he would get people to, to do it. Okay. And um, I said, OK. I said, let's do this. And this is granted before 9-11. So it's a little tougher, you know, after 9-11. Yeah, sure. But um, the ATF is, um, I know everybody knows who they are, alcohol, tobacco, firearms. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that govern everything when it comes to explosives. And um, I get regular visits, you know, three, four a year. They check up and, and they do a really good job of making sure people are safe. Okay. So people that have explosive license like me, um, I can actually buy dynamite. I mean, I can actually buy things that if I rolled down the middle of a street would level city blocks. 
So obviously that's something that they want to watch. They want to watch. So I got started. Um, it took a little while. The FBI investigates you, and they do some background checks, and then uh, they'll do some investigating, and then they'll say either yay or nay. Okay. And back then it was a yay. And there's not too many people in the state of Indiana that has the license that we carry. And um, is if, it different than the license you had when you started? So as your shows have gotten bigger, no, have you had to the, license the license stays the same. Okay. Um, we're actually looking at um, next year going into wholesale and retail. So we, we've also looked at manufacturing, which is really difficult. But as that goes on, we'll start branching our, our license out bigger. But as far as the shows go, no, that's what my, that's what my license is for, is for firework shows. Okay. But um, the ATF is definitely, um, it's fun. It's not that it's hard to get the license. It's just knowing the rules, regulations, making sure that you're staying in, in compliance. Okay. Um, even when we do, you know, like this year, we'll be doing Richmond show. Um, the distances from the crowd and and just making sure you're following all the proper rules but talk about some of that because some people who may not be familiar with your shows are, are going to have a chance to see it this yeah. year because you mentioned you're you're adding on richmond yeah at fountain city as well as at richmond i assume yep. you're doing something ground close for the yep. crowd we're doing as well as we're area. doing some groundwork um we're gonna have we're gonna have I don't know if I should spoil it or not, but don't we're, spoil it. But, but we're gonna have some we're gonna have some teasers. <laughs> you guys remember the gas bombs, right? So you're gonna have some gas explosions. You're gonna have uh, you might have a tank and a helicopter shooting at each other, and we're gonna bring back some of the fun that um, I want Richmond to have um, with that. So I've never seen a Richmond fireworks show, so this will be my first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Um, so you don't know what you're up. Against. I don't know what I'm up against. I hope everybody loves it. I mean, uh, we'll do our best, and I, I hope that they'll enjoy the show. But we do have some surprises for them, and uh, we're going to bring back some some bigger stuff and some bigger shells and should wow the crowd so you're not into manufacturing so mm -hmm. how are you get are you the the gentleman who helped you get your license that you mentioned are so, you still buying products no now? he you moved on? he actually um so the places i get my stuff from are, come from multiple states or different areas mm -hmm. and um so you got you know um louisville kentucky for instance i go down there and i pick some product out and then what i like to do is i demo all these different places and then I see what I like, and then I kind of configure my show based on what I like. Now, granted, there's other people that like different stuff, so sure. my brother is my partner, and, and he likes different things, so I try and, you know, we try and work together on that. And then uh, um, one of my best friends, he's on our, on our team too, and we work, we work together and kind of collaborate. But product, as far as product, I buy most of my product down in um, Sunman, Indiana and um, Lynch Imports and, and they, they've been there for a long time and I used to use Carter but it was Bowling Green, Indiana. So it's very difficult to travel that distance, get back for a show, set up and do that and so I found that Sunman was 45 to an hour away from me so it's a lot easier to, to get product there and I've been there ever since. You say you demo products, so I'm going to ask because I don't know yeah. anything about this. So it's my favorite are time you, of the year. Are you looking at books and they're telling you, or so do you actually get to see a bunch of fireworks? I get to see place? a bunch of fireworks, so <sighs> we get to go to uh, multiple shows. Um, usually early spring, it's cold, rainy, sometimes snowing, you know. Oh, but nice. So, but we get to see a lot of different products, and uh, that's how I can tell what I want to use for the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. um, we'll reserve product because a lot of things sell out. Um, but the product, I'll get a catalog, I'll get a DVD, I can sit and research, and then also the internet's your best friend now. So anything I want to want to see or or find on the internet, it's usually there. You know, YouTube and goes for anybody buying um, retail products as well. Um, you want to know what it does. Mm -hmm. They got the barcodes on the on the fireworks now that you can use your phone and it pulls it right up and, and you, you, can, you see can see what it, see does. What it does. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that. Um, the, the future is changing, obviously, and they're they're making it better for consumers to be able to see where you're going. I remember when I was a kid, I didn't know what it did. Sure. I just thought it looked cool, you know. Hey, it's got Mighty Mouse on it. I want this one, you know. And and so now they're making it so smart generation can just pull their phone up and go, oh wow, that's what that does. I want one of those. So it is making it better for for consumers as well. But um, fun times, you know. When you're building your shows, how do you decide? what you want to put in as far as okay I'm going to go with something that goes up 
200 feet, something 600 feet. How, right. do, how do you build, if you're building a 20 minute fireworks display, what, what are, what's your criteria for being able to do something? So like when that? I do that, I look at, first I'll see your space, um, how much space you have. Because if you don't have enough space, I can't go for a bigger fireworks show. Okay. Um, distances are your best friend, so um, I'll first see if I'm 600 feet, I know I can't go past an 8 inch shell. So, and then from there, you kind of find out what your person's budget is. So we were working on a church group today in Shelbyville, and um, he wanted to shoot um, a couple hundred yards away, and then his spectators be back. Well, that's a very big shoot because you have to have bigger shells if you're that farther back. So when I do that, when I look at a 20-minute shoot, I kind of look at your budget, and then I'll start from there. Then I'll go, oh, okay, I know I can shoot three, fours, and fives. Those will work well. And then after I know what size shells I'm using, then I go in and handpick which cases I want to get. So the cases um, based on, you know, everybody likes the Great Willow one that when it blows up, it goes down. Okay. Yeah, so I know that's a favorite. So then I'll, I'll take that and I'll put it in my show and I'll find those shells or some like the crackle, some like um, mm -hmm. the ones that kind of fall all the way down to the ground, you know. And, and then it also depends on if I'm doing like we do a lot of um, weddings and we'll do um, graduations. So if you have a Richmond graduate that wants to shoot a fireworks show for their you know, celebration, mm -hmm. we'll find red fireworks. And we'll try and team up, you know, if it's Hagerstown, we'll do purple and gold. If it's Northeastern, we'll do green and gold. Centerville, blue and white. So blue's a little harder. Blue's one of the hardest ones that you, you when you see a fireworks shell go off, mm -hmm. blue's the hardest color to get and the most expensive color to shoot. Wow. So blue is definitely, when you see a blue firework, it's special. Okay. So When you're looking at the price of fireworks, what makes the difference? The size of the shell, how high it goes, do those two there's, things? There's a couple things. Um, the bigger it is, the more expensive. Um, and then what it does. So I can buy um, shells that are premium shells. I can buy regular shells. So premium shells are going to be the ones that when they blow up, they might do the firework, but then they're going to go do something else. Okay, so they're the ones that have two stage. Yeah, they're 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 multi effects. Okay, whereas you get a firework that goes up and blows up, you're like, oh, that's great. But then when you get into some of the more expensive ones, um, ghost shells and and such, those those shells are premium shells. They're high end, high end, high dollar, like a fine cigar. So I mean, they're they're expensive. So you kind of have to play, you know, by what, what we do is um, we kind of ask the customer what they want. Because anybody can say, I'll shoot you a fireworks show, and, um, y you know, the budget's, um, it's what you want. You know, you can go out to Shelton's and buy fireworks if you want, and it's just how much you want to spend. Sure. And uh, we have uh, insurance restrictions, and a lot of people don't know that um, when they go to Shelton's, and I, I've been out there and I've seen them spend three and $4,000, mm -hmm. we can do a show for that. So it's... It's kind of like, but then you get into the guys that go, we just like to shoot them. I'm like, you go have fun, <laughs> you know. So You, you understand yeah, that. Yeah, you. you go have fun. So I understand that too. So we kind of want to do a little bit of everything. So we're going to get into maybe some wholesaling and retailing next year and, um, and, and shoot the shows. Yeah. So hopefully we're building our name and uh, people know, hey, we do Richmond Fireworks now and hopefully it'll go off great. And then, hey, that's the guy that does Fountain City too. And, Oh, hey, he does um, Elks Fall Festival and, you know, all, all the things that we do in, in this town is, it's awesome. And the people here are awesome and um, I like Richmond, so. As you are looking at this, as you looked at this 10 years ago when you went, Never hey, I want to do that. Never would have thought. I just like to shoot fireworks. I'm that guy that just likes to shoot and have fun. Our kids like to shoot fireworks. and. Uh, you know, every year we'd be like, hey, let's shoot fireworks. And I just said, well, I want to shoot the big stuff. And that's how I got into it, really. I mean, and we do so much big stuff. The kids see a lot of it. And when you're down to about 10th show, they're like, man, fireworks again. You never, <laughs> you never would have thought a kid would say that, but they do. They're like, man, that's a lot of work, you know. And, and so at the end of the year, we always try and do what we call a kid show. And that's the stuff that doesn't go real high in the air, doesn't blow up, but it's the stuff to bring you back to why you did them, you know, bottle them. rockets and Roman candles and the, and the cool stuff. So we like all types of fireworks, but um, the shows are definitely, they're a lot of work, but mm -hmm. they're awesome when they go off right. So 
you're setting up, I know that, and it will have happened um, by the time we do this, you do Richmond Jazz shows. Yep, Richmond Jazz. Talk about the difference between setting up to do a Richmond Jazz show and setting up to do a Fountain City or a Richmond show as far as the time in and it's things a of that nature. half a day compared to a full day. Okay. <laughs> and that's just because of the shells, you know, and how much you're shooting. Obviously, the, the city shoots, they, send, they spend a, a ton of money to try and make sure they have the best show possible. And, uh, you know, the Richmond Jazz, they do a wonderful job. I mean, we've yeah. done it for many years. And um, it, it's just a different type because when you're shooting the jazz show, I can't go over a three-inch shell. And the reason for that is safety. I mean, you have houses, you're, you're in a, in a subdivision, you're in a neighborhood yeah. situation, and you have to be so far away. So really, I'm restricted to three-inch shells, and I can just buy a bunch of different three-inch shells and then a bunch of cakes and, and just have a good time. And, and they're usually pretty fun. So. All right, you just mentioned three-inch shells. You mentioned cakes. Yep. Um, three-inch shell, obviously, is the size. It's What's the mortar shell. So a cake is a party in a box. It's, it's what we call, let's have fun, light it, and walk away. Um, so, uh, whereas you're doing <laughs> you all the work, yeah, it? yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you know what, I do, but I mean, some people might not, but the, you light the box and the box goes off and it does multiple effects. And, and that, when I say party in your box, that's, that's fun stuff. I mean, you don't have, you can, I can actually sit back and watch that, you know, when I'm shooting mortars, I can't watch, you know, I, there's a lot of times I'll shoot a whole show and I'm, I've never seen nothing go off. So it's you're, always, you're physically, yeah, we, we do people. both. Um, okay. Um, when we were doing Muncie Prairie Creek, we have all the equipment to do both. Um, we do electronic firing and then hand firing. And I like to do a lot of hand firing because it can you get... You do like to do it. Yes, because it's so expensive to do the electronic stuff. So you, you, when you do a firework show, it's just double the amount of money as far as... When I say double the amount, double the amount of thousand, a thousand extra dollars just for me to physically connect everything spend the extra time, manpower to connect everything, and then make sure it goes off right. So we've had times where it doesn't go off right. Mm -hmm. And then you might lose a part of your finale set, or, and that's not what you want. And so we try and hand fire the most. Um, we're, we've been doing this long enough now that we don't hear as well anymore, but there's a reason why we don't wear our, our ear, because me and my brother, we know when that sound, hey, you need to step away, and you have about a second to turn your head. So really dangerous. Um, we always talk about it. We've been very fortunate, you know, that we haven't had any accidents the, all the years we've been doing it. And fireworks are dangerous. And so I always tell everybody, kids, my kids, everybody, it's dangerous whether it's consumer or professional. So um, we have a lot of fun, but the safety is probably the biggest thing. And, and when you're hand firing compared to electronic firing, um, obviously it's way safer to do electronic firing, but we do a lot of hand firing just for the pure reason we can kind of control the show so not trying to get into your business and what you're making yeah. but I've, I've heard the cost de depending on the show somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple of thousand dollars a minute to do a good show yep. is that so that's about right for Rossi and Gucci and these bigger companies okay those are, those so, are large companies doing so yeah large companies and they're not going to come out from New York and uh, you know Cincinnati and those areas just to not make money. Sure. Um, what we've done, I think, me and my brother and, and, and Corey, uh, is make it affordable, make it nice, um, if we make something great. And it's a, this is, on, hey, be real, this, is a, this was a hobby, okay. and now it's turning into more of a business. business. So um, now we're starting to get into that aspect of it, you know, with the retail, the wholesale, mm -hmm. um, and, and doing more shows. So on the average, you know, on a, on a big shoot, you should make about 30%. Um, a lot of these companies don't do that. Um, they're making 50%, 60%. Okay. And so I can't speak for them, nor would I want to say that's what they're doing. Um, not, not what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying in the business standard, um, a 30% is what you should usually charge for a firework show. Now that changes um, if a youth group comes to me, or you know, the Centerville Ball League or Fountain City. We're just going to shoot fireworks, man. We're not, you know, it's not something that we're. Listen, I'm not rich, and I'm not get, I'm not living in a mansion on the hill. I was like, listen, if you guys want to do a fireworks show, let's do it. But you're doing what you're doing locally. Yes, a lot I love of times. it. Yes, and it's all local, and listen, there's a lot of people that need help, and uh, we just like to have fun and. You know, if we make something, then that's great. But 
honestly, it, it's more fun for us to shoot fireworks and watch people's reactions. We've had people in Fountain City, when I first started Fountain City, I never thought it would be what it's today. And two years ago, I had a lady um, text me on Messenger and say, I just want to tell you, you saved my family because your fireworks show, my family got to come out and enjoy pizza together. And that's the only time of the year that my whole family got together and sat down as a family and watched the show. And I told my brother, I said, that's why you do it. I said, that, that right there says it all for us. That's why we do it. I said, and it, it, we've had other people say, hey, we love it. We get to come out there get our spot, you know, and, and enjoy it, and hopefully that's what Richmond will do, you know, start, you know, with us. I mean, hopefully they'll come to our shows and say, hey, that's Scraddy, Scraddy Pyrotechnics. They're, they're shooting Richmond this year. We got to go. So hopefully everybody, it's a win-win for everybody, and they can get back to having fun, you know. I won't ever want to hear somebody say, I watched a bad fireworks show. So that's, that's what we're about, you know. Jeremy, I appreciate the yeah. time. Thank appreciate you very your time much for being part of no thank you focus i hope okay. you have a, a very nice fourth of july i know you're going to be working it yes hard. we'll be working so and hopefully you'll come to some of the shows i definitely will all right sounds great we'll be back with more in focus in just a moment Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, good, good morning to uh, Governor Holcomb, uh, Jeff, Bill, uh, Billy, and uh, Mayor Snow and Distinguished Guests. Um, thank you for all coming today. Uh, my name is Chulim. I'm the head of pet segments for uh, Blue Buffalo, uh, a pet uh, segment of uh, General Mills. Um, I want to thank you all uh, for coming to join us on this fabulous event um, on the opening of our newest Blue Buffalo Heartland facility here in Richmond, Indiana. I'm sure you see that this is indeed a state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing facility, not only just for PET, but it actually uh, it was built with all the human uh, quality uh, consideration as well. So, um, and we're really proud that it is right here in Richmond, Indiana. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our uh, fellow Hoosier, Jeff Harmony, uh, our own chairman of the board and chief executive officer of General Mills to help us kick off this wonderful event. Well, what a wonderful day to be back home again in Indiana. So it's great to see uh, my fellow buffs and, uh, and also my fellow Hoosiers. The, uh, it's, a, it's an exciting day for me. I learned a lot of my values growing up in the great state of Indiana. I'm a native of Terre Haute and a graduate of uh, DePaul University. And um, so it's exciting to me on a personal level. It's also exciting to me to be here on a professional level as a, as a chairman and CEO of General Mills, the second largest natural and organic food company in the United States. And, you know, one of the reasons why I'm so pleased to be here is that in Indiana, we care a lot about families. And uh, the same is true of Blue Buffalo. And we, any of us who have pets, and I have a, I have a nine-year-old King Charles Cavalier Spaniel named Fox, we know that, that we don't treat the members, the pets as members of our families. They are members of our families. And so you all know that, and I all know that, and it's certainly one of the values of General Mills since it was founded in 1866 on the banks of the Mississippi River. We've been serving families with brands like Cheerios and Nature Valley and Gold Medal Flower for many, many years. And now to have Blue Buffalo as a part of our family is exciting as well. The other reason I'm excited is that you know, we've invested $200 million in the state of Indiana to build a, a food facility that is worthy of the pets that we serve. And I just had a chance to tour the facility this morning. And I'm telling you, I, I have not seen a better facility facility of all of General Mills. And we're a global company with $18 billion in sales serving markets all over the world. I'm telling you, there is not a better facility than one that you're, you're standing in front of right now. And so 
Uh, on behalf of General Mills, um, I want to let you know we are excited to, uh, to welcome Blue Buffalo to our family, to welcome the facility here in Richmond to our family. And as I say, for me, it is a fantastic day on a number of levels. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to the president of our pet business and the founder, one of the founders of Blue Buffalo, uh, Billy Bishop. Billy, come on up. Thank you, Jeff. And good morning, everybody. Uh, man, what an historic day uh, for Blue Buffalo. I got to tell you, 16 years ago, uh, Dad and I and my brother Chris, back in the, a tiny little barn uh, with seven other buffs in Wilton, Connecticut, uh, started off on a dream. Uh, and we had no idea how pet parents uh, would take our natural, uh, healthy, and holistic products. Uh, you flash forward just a few years, and, and then look where we are today, guys. Uh, to be here in front of you to open up our second uh, Blue Buffalo Heartland facility here in the great, great city of Richmond, Indiana. Uh, again, fills us with such joy, such pride, uh, and such humbleness, guys. Um, I got a tour as well this morning, and just to see how the buffs have all come together, these Richmond buffs, and, and build truly uh, state-of-the-art, uh, world-class uh, manufacturing facility, as Jeff said, not just for pets, uh, but I'll put it up against any human plant uh, any, time, any, uh, any day of the week. But I want to thank, uh, again, I want to thank the Richmond Buffs for what they did. I love their saying, not only do we follow the NA policy, uh, but we're, hung we're humble, we're hungry, and we're smart, guys. And I think that's going to continue to carry us, not only as the fastest uh, pet food, major pet food company in the U.S. today, but it's going to help us uh, feed more pets. Uh, and become get into more families. Right now, we serve roughly 10 million households, uh, a little more than that, and our quest is to, uh, to be everywhere pet food is sold, and I gotta tell you, this facility is gonna help us do that. So, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it, I think, back to Chu, uh, who's gonna continue on with the ceremonies. But on behalf of Blue Buffalo, the Bishop family, and everybody involved, uh, thank you for all you've done. Look forward to working with you and continuing to make history in the pet food uh, marketplace. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Uh, let's welcome Valerie Schaefer, President of Wayne County Economic Development Corporations to the stage. Good morning. It is so very exciting to be here with all of you today to celebrate the grand opening of what is truly an extraordinary facility. I've been my 14th year of practicing economic development, and over the years, my office has dedicated countless hours to prepare our industrial parks for this very moment. We acquire land, we initiate studies, we extend infrastructure, and we compile loads of data to prepare for any question that might arise from a prospective company. Then we respond to lead after lead, hoping that a match is made among a company, a site here, and within our great community. And luckily for us, a match was made with Blue Buffalo. So the day Blue Buffalo first visited Richmond to determine if what they saw on paper met their standards, they came across a local team that was able to check off all of their boxes. Over the next several months, we entertained many more site visits, countless conference calls, and after each one, my excitement continued to grow because I knew we were getting closer to closing the deal. Now we're able to stand here today to celebrate what is truly a landmark project in economic success for Wayne County. Richmond is officially known as the pet food manufacturing capital of Indiana. As this industry cluster grows, we can be proud of the fact that our pet food producers are not only investing in our community and our people, but also helping our local uh, agricultural community to help them grow and be sustainable. Since the opening of the plant, I have heard time and time again from Blue's local leadership that they are impressed with the hardworking and skilled level of our workforce. So to all of you who are employed as above today, I wanna thank you for your hard work and dedication because you are truly the heartbeat of this city and the company. Lastly, on behalf of all the local leaders in Wayne County, I want to say thank you to General Mills for investing in your future here. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next, it is my honor to welcome to the stage Richmond Mayor Dave Snow. Well, first, a welcome to Governor Eric Holcomb, uh, First Lady Janet, and the star of today's show, Hen uh, social media sensation Henry the Schnauzer. Uh, welcome to Richmond today. It's a, pl it's a true pleasure to have you. And thank you to Governor Holcomb for your continued leadership of our great state and your dedication to partnering with cities across Indiana to help grow our economy. The state of Indiana continues to play a supportive role in Richmond's economic and quality of life development. And departments such as the Indiana Economic Development Corporation are always prompt and responsive, which enables Richmond to present comprehensive and competitive investment opportunities. Today's ribbon cutting of this remarkable facility marks not only the beginning of a long and meaningful relationship with General Mills and Blue Buffalo, it's yet another milestone of collaboration for Richmond and Wayne County. Understanding the importance of working together as elected officials and leveraging compromise to find a path forward has been a cornerstone of my administration. And the efforts that led to this day were a partnership between our Richmond City team, the EDC, members of City Council, County Commissioners, and County Council. Much like the Blue Buffalo philosophy, we understand that it's only through our ability to work together that we're able to succeed. As I've had the opportunity to meet the Blue Buffalo team, I've continued to be impressed at their commitment to their facility, their workforce, and their surrounding community. Blue Buffalo is truly a top-notch company and clearly has an even brighter future ahead. The City of Richmond is committed to being your partner in that success, and even more, as I look out amongst this audience today, I see the hardworking faces of the women and mean, men who have joined this buff team. And to all of you, you are not only the secret to what will make Blue Buffalo continue to thrive, you are what makes our community a shining star on the Midwestern map. And as I tour the facility and take in the culture of Blue Buffalo and get that understanding of family first, I can think of no better way to highlight the Hoosier workforce and that true spirit of Blue Buffalo than to know that it's always about family on the buff team. So thank you to Jeff, Bill, and Billy, and the entire Blue Buffalo family, and as mayor of Richmond, and on behalf of our great citizens, it is my honor to say to you, welcome home. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Snow. Um, we were honored to have then Lieutenant Governor Holcomb when we broke ground back in 2016 Today, Governor Gokum is back with First Lady Janet, as well as their uh, lovely pup, Henry, to join us on the opening of this facility with us. So here, it's my honor to introduce the 51st Governor of Indiana, Herrick Holcomb. All right, we'll see how this goes. Good morning. It is uh, great to be back. Thank you, Chu, and uh, always good, Mayor, to, to be in Wayne County in Richmond, Indiana. It's an exciting day for us all. We've been thinking about this for some, some time now uh, in anticipation. Brad's good to see you. Jeff, uh, you as well, and, and Bill, good to be with you again. And Billy, uh, with you, and Valerie, your entire team, Mayor. Uh, as well, of course, I had to bring Henry with me, obviously. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, you paid his appearance fee, <laughs> treats. He can smell the millions of pounds of dog food that he's a, he's a big fan of the wilderness uh, line, the salmon and chicken, if you're wondering. Um, but uh, he, he truly feels like he's in doggy heaven right now, I can tell you that. He is, um, by the way, the second most popular Holcomb. <laughs> Next to my beautiful bride, Janet. I'm a... I'm a distant third, and I've, I've made peace with that. Uh, but to say that, uh, that we are excited as, a, as the Holcomb herd um, to, to join the the Blue Buffalo herd is an understatement. It's, like I said, it's a day that we've been anticipating since, Chu, you mentioned I was Lieutenant 
governor, and I, I think I inducted myself uh, during that time as an honorary member of the Blue Buffalo Herd and became a buff myself. That was three years ago. You think about all that's unfolded over a three-year period. A lot's changed since then. This used to be a field, and now it's a, a field of dreams, so to speak, for dogs and, and humans alike. But one thing that hasn't changed, and it's been alluded to by almost everyone that's preceded me uh, up here on the stage, is Blue Buffalo's commitment uh, to the people of this area and to the community and to the, to the pet parents and to the, to the pets themselves. And I can just tell you that in terms of this company, a herd mentality is a good thing. And so we're very appreciative, Jeff, that you've continued to, to focus in on, on this facility and to grow it to the extent that it has so quickly uh, that we find today. We're just stoked that you're growing your presence here in Indiana and with the opening of the Heartland uh, Pet Food Manufacturing Facility. This is, as the mayor said, a state-of-the-art facility that that not only sets up well for your future as a as a company, but it sets up well for the for the community here and for all the career, not just jobs, but all the career opportunities for the folks uh, that call Indiana home. And you couldn't have picked a better time or a better place to to grow your roots here deep. Uh, Indiana is racking up the winds as of as of late, and it's happening border to border and all points and places in between. Our Hoosier business uh, environment has been ranked number one in the Midwest. Uh, it's because we offer certainty and predictability and stability. And now for so, so many years, a lot of continuity to back up the decision that you had to uh, ultimately arrive at. And you've gotten to know firsthand uh, the quality of our workforce here in the Hoosier State and our herd uh, that will be working here and not just not just working but living and playing to the max here um, this truly is a match made in heaven and they're just they're just those are just some other reasons um, why companies like blue buffalo are are um, um, stampeding you know they talk, call it a buffalo trace and they're stampeding to our state and and growing and choosing to operate here because you can scale up at your own pace according to what the market's uh, needs are. And uh, we know uh, that when you made that decision, that ultimate decision or that choice, uh, we know that you did your homework. And we know that you had 49 other options in the United States of America to choose from. And I don't want you to think for one second that we take for granted all that went into that and how proud that we are that you arrived here working with Valerie and her, your team uh, and, and the state, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, all working in unison harmoniously to make sure that, that uh, your launch was going to be successful and for many years to come. You saw that the state and local leadership all came together and your mission became our mission. And that goes right to that real um, family feeling that just oozes out of its all. So we'll keep doing our part. Uh, we'll keep earning your trust and confidence so that you know that uh, this choice was the right choice and we'll uh, we'll seek every day to make you proud of the decision that you made so on behalf of me uh, the state of indiana 6.6 .6 million plus hoosiers uh, pet parents all over the state uh, the pets themselves congratulations to to uh, this partnership and uh, the legacy that you're truly building here. We're, we're just excited to be buffs and we're excited to run with the herd. Thank you all very much. Hi, bud.
Welcome back to In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We are not in the city building. We are out in Elstro Plaza. The Richmond Jazz Orchestra is playing behind us, part of a wonderful evening and a very good day. We've got Mayor Dave Snow here with us, and you've had a very busy day. Indiana Conference of Mayors yeah. going on, 50th uh, anniversary celebration of the city, and now you're hosting this evening for the most part. <laughs> right. How's it been going? It's been going fantastic. So. The Indiana Conference of Mayors, for those viewers that don't know, is an opportunity for all the mayors of Indiana to come together, uh, collaborate, share ideas, work through problems that we're all facing. Sometimes as a mayor, you feel like you're in this little bubble. I must be the only person in the world that deals with this. Mm -hmm. But when you sit down with all the other mayors, it's stuff that we're all dealing with. And we get to share ideas on how to overcome some of those obstacles. So uh, this is the 20th anniversary of the Indiana Conference of Mayors. Uh, the first meeting 20 years ago, June, 20 years back, was held right here in Richmond. So this is ICOM's second trip to Richmond 20 years later, and it just so happens to coincide with the 50th anniversary of our city hall. So we thought we'd marry the two, not only do ICOM and bring all the mayors here, uh, but have this big reception and have an open house. So how, I am the luckiest guy in the world. I got to serve as mayor through Indiana's Bicentennial. I got to be president of the Indiana Conference of Mayors for the 20th anniversary and bring it back to Richmond and be mayor during the 50th anniversary of City Hall. I feel like I've had the luckiest life in the world, so this is amazing. You've got a 50-year-old building over uh -huh. there, and yeah. I know you. You went rummaging around trying to find some 50-year-old <laughs> yes. stuff. Yes, absolutely. What did you find? There's all kinds of cool stuff in that building. Um, we found the uh, original golden shovel that Mayor Clutie used to break ground uh, over there before the building was built, and that's on display right now. Uh, there's. We actually found the ordinance that council passed to appropriate the dollars to build that building. Really? We enlarged it and printed it. Yeah, so it's over there. Signed in 1966 by council president Ken Paust. And that's <laughs> remarkable. That's Ken has been a part of local government forever. <laughs> Literally for Yeah. So uh, there's so much cool stuff over there uh, that once you start getting into some of the closets that you can find. When I took over as mayor, there's this um, shiny foil jacket in my, in my closet. It's okay. like a fire proof jacket and it says mayor on the back so the fire chief was coming in and I put it on and I said chief this is cool how old is this and he said uh, mayor take that off that's asbestos that should not be in your closet <laughs> so I said, why is it even still here so there's all kinds of cool old stuff in there there's a bunch of old stuff that you just can't get rid yeah, of yeah it's all just hanging around in there yeah so it's it's such a cool old building how are some of the mayors reacting to to the city obviously we're finishing up and, and some of the construction is beginning to finish up what's their yeah. thoughts as they see some oh they are loving this as they see this you know uh, mayors coming from all different kinds of cities that are in the middle of construction looking at construction looking at projects trying to figure out what they can do to better their community they're seeing what we're doing and they're just enamored they're saying I'm looking at these uh, pedestrian and bicycle paths these are awesome how are you getting this done I'm looking at this downtown park this is amazing uh, you know looking at the former hospital project and saying we've got old buildings like this that we got to get rid of how did you do this so uh, they've just been so thrilled with the learning opportunities and very impressed with all that we're getting done. And the thing that they've been the most impressed with is the, the, the welcoming attitude of the whole community. Because everybody's been so excited about this. You know, uh, Jerry the Bald Bee Man made Indiana Conference of Mayor honey labels for tonight. Nice. And they've gotten that kind of welcome everywhere they've been. And they've just said, what a welcoming, wonderful city. They've just, they've loved every minute of it. Cool. I know you have some people that you need to see and you need to greet this evening. But before we go, I want to remind people that Mayor Snow has agreed to do In Focus with us, a 90-minute program, one of yeah. our uh, one of our marathons. I love it. I love it. I always appreciate when you give me that opportunity to come in and just talk for a while. And we're going to talk. everybody knows I like to talk. We're going to answer. He's going to answer my questions, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. He's going to answer your questions. So we'll be live in the studio from, seven, from 6 to 7.30 on Thursday, July 18th. Please join us for that In Focus program, and we will be taking your questions for Mayor Snow. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Welcome back to In Focus. Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We found Mayor Dave Wood from Mishawaka. Thanks for taking a few minutes. Oh, it's great to be here. How long have you been mayor of Mishawaka? About 10 years now. What's what's the most challenging part of that job for you? Uh, the frustration of knowing that uh, the first thing I learned was uh, how much power I do not have. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you learn that on day yeah, I one? I learned that real quick. <laughs> the Indiana Conference of Mayors, are you incredibly active with that group and what are you learning from them? You know, I've been active uh, really since I've been in office with this group. It's a great group of mayors. We have great camaraderie. Uh, always learn something every time I come to one of these and just always impressed with all the cities I get to visit around Indiana. And, uh, you know, just like every one of these, I will take a project from Richmond and I'm going to copy and paste it in Mishawaka. What what project? What projects have you seen? Because you all have had a chance. Is there something in particular that you've seen that really kind of says, you know, that might work? Yeah, you know, I was just over and saw the trail going down uh, town here, and okay, I love like this that. park, yeah. and uh, just taking some ideas out of this park as well. I love the farmers market aspect of it, and uh, community, uh, uh, just the community connection with this. This is outstanding. The state of Indiana has seemed to do very well. How is your area from an economic standpoint going? We are growing like crazy. We've had over a billion dollars of new growth over billion the past. With a B. With a B since uh, just in my term alone, uh, my 10 years alone. And then uh, each year we're growing at uh, a clip of about 100 to $150 million in, in new development. So we're, we're very excited about it. Very nice. Thank you. We appreciate you taking some time. I know this is a relaxing evening for you. Well, nice to meet you. you thank you very much. Come up to the cool north. Uh, we'd love to have you. We'll do that. Right. Thank you. Thanks. And we continue on In Focus here in Elstro Plaza talking to Mayor Goodnight from Kokomo. Thanks for taking some time with us this evening. Thank you for having me. And, and uh, the weather, the, the clouds parted. It's uh, beautiful tonight and, and the band sounds great. And, and thanks for having us here and hosting this event. Glad to be able to do it. Um, as you've worked with the Indiana Conference of Mayors, what is it that you've been able to glean through your session so far? And I know you all aren't done. Well, we're not finished. And, and I'm in my 12th year as mayor, and I, I like to get together with the other mayors and kind of share ideas and challenges that we're all facing, uh, not just here in Indiana, but within the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a great conference. Uh, Richmond has done a great job of hosting us. Uh, the uh, We've we've kind of looked at a couple of the local businesses, went to barbecue place last night, and uh, the community seemed to be uh, very welcoming. So we're very excited to be here. Talk about a couple of the challenges, but a couple of the highs that you've experienced lately in your community? Well, uh, in our community, it, it's very similar to uh, Richmond. It's kind of, you know, we have these uh, older cities that, that uh, you know, facing in the Midwest that have faced the challenges of population shifts and, and all those things. And, and so uh, even though we share the same, um, you know, challenges, uh, we, we kind of work together. And I look at a lot of the construction going on. I see a lot of trees planted here in Richmond. This revitalization, you, you can see it. And, and as far as I'm concerned, I haven't been here in a couple of years, and you can feel it. And, and the vibrancy and the uh, economic activity, uh, I hope the people of Richmond are very proud of what, what's, what they're experiencing right now. Now, we've got a branch of IU East here, regional campus of IU East, and obviously you we have, have an, one Indi too. Indiana University Kokomo, and I know they are, they're very competitive, and we have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, with sports and all those things, but uh, so, yeah, we have, we have a beautiful campus, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I like I say, I don't get to Richmond very often. Every, once every two years, we uh, I, I follow high school sports. You're in the uh, same conference, so uh, I get over here every now and then, and, and uh, like I say, I, I enjoy coming here. Mayor, thank you very much my, for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Continuing on in focus here on WGTV Channel 11, Mayor Lamb from yes. Sullivan. The city of Sullivan, God's country. Where There's exactly? Just 20 minutes south of Terre Haute. Terre Haute is our favorite suburb. I always say that there in the city of Sullivan. <laughs> I'm sure they like that. They, Mayor Bennett loves that very, very much. Uh, we have a population just under 5,000. Okay. Sullivan County is the home to Sullivan County Park and Lake, built in 1968. The very first county park and lake uh, in the state of Indiana. Really? Yes, absolutely. And the gentleman that says, I want you, with the long white beard and the... Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, yeah. He's from Walter Botts, the model from Sullivan, Indiana. Yeah. Whoa! Okay. Little little tidbit there about my city. I like that. See, yeah. that's really good. Absolutely. As a, as a small town, five thousand sure. people. What are some of the challenges that you face, and how have you all been able to overcome them? Well, you know, I think if you talk to a lot of the mayors all across the state of Indiana, we all have the same challenges. It's just our budgets. They're all the same, but there's Fort Wayne has more zeros. <laughs> after yeah. their budget. But honestly, it's police, it's fire, it's infrastructure, it's parks, it's quality of life, it's cemeteries, it's it's the same thing. I don't care if you're 5,000 or if you're a half a million people. We all have the same challenges. Uh, we could talk about a lot of the challenges, but I'll be honest with you, in my city, the biggest challenge I overcome is apathy. It's a community that had just given up, you know, and you see that all across rural America, uh, but you don't necessarily see that in Richmond. 
I'll be honest with you. I've never been to Richmond, Indiana before uh, until this week, and I was very impressed with what I saw. I think Mayor Snow's doing a great job here. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of the road diets, the walkability, being able to move, uh, and I love the, the paying homage to the past here. I think it's very important, especially here in Indiana. Uh, so, you know, whether it's Richmond, whether it's Terre Haute, whether it's Sullivan, we all have the same challenges, but uh, I, I think you have a very progressive mayor here that's trying to do a good job, and uh, I, I just can't get over the historic homes. Yeah. And the historic homes that are still in good shape. There's the difference. The difference. You know, you, you yeah. go through a lot of, uh, not just Indiana, all over the country, yeah. and you see a lot of those places where people have, have suburban sprawl. They moved out, and the core of the communities have kind of dropped over time. But here in Richmond, I think I'm sure it's declined somewhat, just like the rest of America. But what I have seen firsthand is there's an attempt, and that's you're winning if there's an attempt. Because, like I said, my biggest challenge is apathy in my community. The community's given up. Proud to say over the last eight years, though, that we've overcome that apathy, and uh, and we're, we're doing a lot of great things there, just as like a lot of the other mayors that are here this week. If we come to your neck of the woods, yeah. what should we be looking for? Point us in a couple of good directions. Well, obviously, uh, downtown. You see that downtown, downtown, downtown. Uh, downtown Sullivan's starting to come back. When we took office, there was 12 abandoned uh, storefronts downtown. Now there's none. none. So, you know, J.C. Penney's isn't coming back downtown Sullivan. The Root Store is not coming back downtown Sullivan. The Sears Store is not coming back down Sullivan. They're also not going to stay in Honey Creek Mall and Terre Haute very much longer either. Society's changing. It's not a Richmond problem. It's not a Sullivan problem. Society's changing. Amazon and the way we shop, the way we do things, it's a social issue. But what we can do, we can recreate the activity that those stores used to bring. We're not going to bring back 1950s or 1960s downtown Sullivan, mm -hmm. and neither is Richmond. But if you do things like this, where we're at tonight, this is remarkable, farmer's market, because it gets people to gather. And when they gather, what do they do? They bring their pocketbook with them, and they spend money in your local community, and that's what it's all about. But if you come to the city of Sullivan, that's what I'm proud about. It's downtown. It's coming alive again. Uh, downtown Sullivan, you can walk to two grocery stores, two pharmacies. Wow two eye doctors, you can get your taxes done, walk to three banks, you can walk to a farmer's market, you can have entertainment at the Civic Center, you can go to the courthouse, eight places to worship, all within downtown Sullivan, a population of 5,000. And we need to tell that story and, and market that. Uh, and also what I said, when you look forward to Sullivan, Sullivan County Park and Lake, uh, home to 2,000 seasonal residents, and just a lot of great things going on right here in the heartland. Uh, of our of our country, so it's exciting times. Sounds good, Mayor. We look forward to seeing your yeah, community. Absolutely, come down, come by and see us anytime. Sure will. Thank you. Welcome back to In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We have been joined by Mayor Joe Wellman from Washington, Indiana. Am I all right with all of that? You've got it. You've you got go. it. Yes, sir. For those of us who don't know, and I didn't, where is Washington? Washington is in the southwestern part of the state, uh, about halfway between Bloomington and Evansville, city of about 12,000. Okay. What are some of the challenges that, that you're facing or have been facing that you've been able to come out of? Well, one of our big challenges is um, jobs, like everyone else, and housing. And um, we're located along the new segment of I-69 that's being built between Evansville and Indiana. How, how was that construction project for you all down there? Well, we're glad it's done. Okay. Let me put it that way. We've been able to capitalize on it to some extent. We've done some annexation. We've been pl put in place infrastructure. Uh, we're ready for development, and um, we've been doing a lot of uh, promotion of the community. We have the first uh, uh, Japanese uh, auto parts place along that new corridor in our community, so we're real happy about that. Okay. If people are heading down to your direction, what do you suggest they stop and see? We have a very, uh, a very active uh, visitors bureau. We have a, a sizable Amish community in our county, and uh, a lot of tours of that area, uh, of the of the Amish culture and the Amish community. Um, and we have a lot of we have several very beautiful parks in our city. Our main one has a couple of lakes, and uh, we're real proud of it. What's this? Okay, now your main one has a couple of lakes. It's not a large town as far as population goes, 12,000, but what kind of square footage or miles are you talking about around your community? Uh, we, in our parks, we've got about 75 acres. We have one, our largest park is on our east side that has two lakes. We have youth fishing tournaments there. We have back to school bashes, uh, 
a lot Fourth of July festival that's that's very popular. Uh, at that park, we also have a couple of other parks that we've tried to expand. One of them, we just installed a walking path and exercise stations around the park, and uh, we just put some new uh, playground equipment at the third park. So. We're real proud of uh, trying to keep our park system going in Washington. As you join with other mayors around the state, what type of things are you looking to be able to take back home? What type of information are you looking to glean? Well, it's like most uh, trade associations. We all, you know, we commiserate about a lot of the same problems. But mm -hmm. um, we've had some very good sessions, one on recycling this afternoon that I was very interested in hearing because we've had some challenges. We have a very active recycling pro uh, program in our city. Um, but we've run into some issues with the market now as it is with, with recycling. So we had a, was interested in that program. Uh, so I've got some ideas from that, made some contacts there that we hope to follow up on. And uh, it's just, a, just great to get together with other mayors, solve each, help solve each other's problems sometimes, and uh, find out that you know we have a lot of the same issues, whether we're a big city or small, it, it's a matter of scope a lot of times. But, uh, it's great talking to the other the other mayors around town, around the city, state. Have you had a chance to see much of our community and has anything jumped out at you? What's been interesting is all the improvements that have been made lately. I grew up about 45 miles north of here is where I grew up okay. and uh, it's been a long time since I've been back to Richmond and uh, it's great seeing a lot of the projects. This, this plaza right here is very, very unique and very interesting. Um, and uh, we toured some of the parks that you have uh, mm -hmm. last uh, yesterday evening. And I've been real impressed with what Mayor Dave has done around the community. Mayor, thank you very much. Enjoy your stay in Richmond. Sure. Come back and see us much. again. Yes, I will do that. Thank you. My thanks to the mayors who gave us some of their time while they were visiting, as well as to the EDC and the folks from Blue Buffalo who let us in. As we leave you, we'll leave you with some fireworks. I hope you have a safe and happy Fourth of July weekend. Take care. This broadcast of In Focus is being made possible through the support of Reed Health. Reed Health, right beside you. And by Cronin Toyota and Cronin Nissan, with over 70 cars inside their massive showroom so you can shop in comfort. Cronin Toyota and Cronin Nissan, 5601 National Road East.